The second story I want to tell you about has to do with cross-eyed people. So, and here again, how you adapt to being strabismic. Strabismic means misaligned eyes. Your two eyes are not looking at the same point in space at the same time. You can be cross-eyed, your eyes turn in, or you can be wall-eyed, your eyes turn out. How many of you know somebody who has this condition? It's like everyone knows somebody. Whenever I talk about this, somebody say, my brother has that condition, or my nephew, or the guy next door. It's found, strabismus, misaligned eyes, is found in 4% of the population, about 15 million people in the United States. OK? Why do I mention it? Well, for several reasons. Here's a picture of me at age two. And when I showed this picture to one of my colleagues, she just completely focused on the stuffed rabbit. <laughs> but I want you to look instead at the eyes. And what you'll see there is my left eye is looking at something, and my right eye is turned in. If you had taken the snapshot at another moment in time, I might have been looking at something with my right eye. It would have been straight, and my left eye would have turned in. So I had strabismus, crossed eyes, and what happened is that when I looked with one eye, the other eye turned in. I had what was called alternating esotropia. Esotropia means turned in eyes. And alternating means I used both eyes. When I looked to the left, I actually used my right eye, and my left eye turned in. And when I looked to the right, I used my left eye, and my right eye turned in. Cross fixation. OK? So, but I alternated very rapidly between these two eyes, sometimes more than once per second. So that's why it was called alternating esotropia. OK? I had three eye muscle surgeries as a child at ages two, three, and seven by a very respected ophthalmologist. And after my surgeries, my eyes looked straight, more or less. Um, but I still did not use them together. I was still functionally cross-eyed. I still used my right eye or my left eye, but I never used them together. So normally, when a person looks out on the world, if they have straight eyes, the two eyes, you fixate on something, your two eyes both turn in or straighten out so that they are looking at whatever it is you want to focus on. But a person with strabismus doesn't do that. They either use one eye or the other. And if they use exclusively one eye, don't alternate like me, they can develop a condition called amblyopia, or lazy eye, um, which is a very serious condition. It is um, amblyopia causes more cases of monocular blindness in the under age 40 population than all other diseases and eye conditions combined, or injuries combined. OK? So if you're strabismic, let's go back to what I was saying before. What does the brain do? It integrates all the information from all your senses to give you a perceptual whole, to give you a unified view of the world. But now you're strabismic, and the right eye is seeing one thing, and the left eye is seeing something else. So you've got conflicting, contradictory information coming into your brain. You have to adapt. And this is where um, the overlap is with the astronauts. When they're up in space, what their gravity receptors are telling them is different from the other sensory systems. They have to adapt. They learn to ignore the vestibular information. Well, one adaptation to strabismus, to crossed eyes, it's not the only adaptation, but it's the adaptation my brain, for whatever reason, chose was suppression. What do I mean by that? If the two eyes are giving me uncorrelated input, just ignore one eye. Just use the other. Since I alternated rapidly between the two eyes, when I was using my right, I turned off the left. When I'm using the left, I turned off the right. What do I mean by turned off? I did not have a conscious perception of what the suppressed eye was seeing at that given moment. OK? So just like an astronaut turned off his vestibular system, I turned off the information coming from one or the other eye at any one time. So that adaptation worked pretty well. But there were some problems. And one that might be of interest to teachers is I had problems learning to read. Why? Because when I would look at a word, let's say, just to pick out of the hat the name Sue, if I looked at the word with my right eye, I might see the S. 
in the same place that my left eye saw the U. So was I seeing Sue or was I seeing U's? And this problem got worse as the print gets smaller. OK? And I didn't have a learning disability in the sense of dyslexia or anything like that. I had a problem with being able to follow uh, letters in a sequence because of the crossed eyes. And my guess is a lot of children out there who have problems learning to read probably have binocular vision problems. They have problems coordinating their two eyes. I had a manifest strabismus. It was obvious that there was something misaligned about my eyes. But a lot of children have, uh, may have binocular disorders that are a little bit more subtle. Um, and so you can't see them just by following their eyes. And you cannot find this out by the standard school nurse vision test. And in fact, binocular vision problems are often not really studied very hard in an eye doctor's office. So what I would do if I had a child who was having trouble reading, the first thing I would do is take them to a developmental or behavioral optometrist who is a specialist on binocular vision and see if they have a binocular vision problem. If they don't, move on to other strategies. But there's a possibility that they do. Um, and that I've gotten from my own experience. OK? So.